Hi guys, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the video. Thank you for taking the time out to watch this video that I've made today. Also, I'd like to, before we start the video, take the time to remind you to please hit the thumbs up button, the subscribe button if you haven't yet subscribed, and the notification button so that you get notified of every video that I release as it's released. I also would like to take a moment to thank Tor Hegum. I'm horrible with names, so I hope I didn't butcher his name. He's our newest channel member. So thank you, Tor. I really, really appreciate you very, very much. Also, if you want to be like Tor and you want to go ahead and hit that join button, please do. I greatly appreciate it. As everything that you guys give helps this channel and supports this channel. This is the third and final video of the week of zero Linux on the Linux tube. We're gonna finish with zero Linux itself, the KDE coup de gras, which is the baby of tech zero dark zero. And to do that, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the webpage and take a look at the release notes. Uh, there's something there that he wants me to mention. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and mention that. And then we'll take a look at the actual distribution itself. Okay, things that are important to note are the important changes. One, it's running the Arch Kernel 6.3. Pa PAMAC is at 10.5. Calamars is 3.3. Mace is 23.3. 20, Exorg is 21.1. KDE Plasma is 5.27. Frameworks is at 5.106. And QT version is 5.15. So those are the more up-to-date packages out there. But what is majorly needing to be mentioned off this is that down here at the bottom, if you remember back in September, uh, there was an uh, issue. I mentioned it, and this applies to all three of the, of the zero Linux variant uh, spins as well as KDE, which is the XFCE, the 0G, and the uh, KDE version of them. Uh, the grub issue that happened where it an update came out it broke grub people were left with an unreadable you know they couldn't get to their their system whatsoever uh, he has addressed these issues uh, I'm just encouraging you guys to take a good read about this section right here should you have any issues uh, with your grub uh, you can certainly reference this right here right now to be able to um, fix your grub uh, these are cases of which things that happen that he's brought to light right here so these are ones that you may want to look at all right either way uh, give this section a read on grub and you should be up to date on what you would need to do should your grub fail from in installing this if you've already installed it and you're running it hey no big deal uh, and so let's go ahead now and just take a look at the actual distribution itself before we log in I wanted to take a minute to show the themed grub menu that was done by Teddy. It's fantastic. As with the other two, it uh, is visually cohesive with the actual ricing or theming that was done to the distribution. So kudos on him. Wonderful work. You could always pop in our Discord server to tell him thank you and tell him how great he's done on this stuff. Uh, he does uh, outstanding work with the icons and all the different uh artwork throughout the theme uh, uh also the, the 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 fonts and stuff i mean he does fantastic work so make sure you spread some love to him you know for what he does uh as well uh so let's go ahead and uh let's uh go ahead and get into the actual distribution and we're logging in right now and this is the SDDM screen, which has been completely customized for Zero Linux. One thing to note is the new theme that has been used uh, for Zero Linux. Uh, Steve has made mention, and it's uh, in the Calamars installer, that they are using the Capuchin theme throughout. So uh, bear in mind, it is beautiful, actually. It's, it's more mellow than before, as in vibrancy, but it's still the same in looks and appearance and subtleness it's it's awesome i i really enjoy this capuchin theme that they've got going on here i like it looks nice i'm going to put in my password here 
and we're going to log in. Uh, when it first booted in, the username was blank. Uh, just make a mention of that. So I actually had to put in my username that I created and then my password and logged in. But it has since remembered it. So I'm going to click log in. And that, that login was actually, that STDM screen was awesome. Now, one of the things that uh, Tech Zero, Dark Zero, a.k.a. Steve, wanted me to mention is with all of his distributions, the first thing that you automatically have to do is you have to update your system. So we're going to go ahead and click update system now and it's going to open up top grade uh which we're going to go ahead and minimize let's see so we can minimize that yep and we're going to uh it's going to do top grade and we're going to do run top grade uh top grade if you don't know is a tool that actually updates everything all at once uh, whether you have snaps on whether you have flat packs on the pac-man the uh, everything everything it, it updates it all at once it's pretty awesome including firmware so either way, I'm going to hit enter and then we're going to let it do its thing where it updates. And when it's done, I will uh, resume the video. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to start. I'm going to pause and then I'll catch you on the flip side. All right. That wasn't too bad. As with the other ones, it only took about two to five minutes altogether for it to update. So everything's good. What I wanted to note is that um, when you click on this and you look at this, because I know some people have eagle eyes out there and before uh they uh say anything um i want you to know that it's already a known issue and it, is, it isn't much that can be done about it and so when i click on the update system now if you notice the buttons and the bar are different and it's different theming uh, that's because one is qt and the other one is gtk and uh they are themed to the best that they can be for for zero linux uh steve is aware of it and steve is uh uh addressed it uh, several times and so i'm uh helping him address it as well so just know that this is what you will see and to expect it and it's not an alarming thing but it does exist so i'm going to close that out and i'm going to mention the tool now as i did with the other ones as well uh familiarize yourself with this tool this tool as with any linux distribution that has these welcome windows or welcome tools are uh, exceptionally awesome because it's kind of a one-stop shop where you can actually look and do things post uh, install uh, right away very easily like update your arch update your system which we've already done post system install config there's these things in here that you can look at that you can actually deal with uh, if you so choose to, uh, but this is the one right here, the install applications that most likely will be more pertinent to most people. And that is that from here, you could add any additional software that you may want, uh, such as kernels. As you can see, it's categorized backup tools. Okay. Uh, in internet browsers. Okay. Uh, as uh, like uh, internet socials, uh, you got Simplex, Whalebird, uh, Office Tools. They got all kinds of stuff. So it's just as simple as like we go to Office Tools, Libre Office Fresh. You click the little button here, select it, and you hit this install selected, and away it goes. Now, mind you, if you select a hundred different apps to or softwares to install, and you are doing that it's going to take a while uh so just bear in mind that the quantity of applications that you're installing versus the time is directly correlated that's just a common sense thing so uh at any instance there you have that that is the welcome tool and uh like i said take the time to familiarize yourself with it and make use of it to the best of your ability to help completely set up your op your linux uh operating system to your desired needs now uh as with all has always been uh from zero linux uh, it is officially their second anniversary that hence the the new logo here with the second anniversary which is kind of cool i can't believe it's two years already i remember when it first came out so it was is it's been, been an inspiration and a thing of beauty from its inception and has remained so uh so that's kind of cool on the thing. But the actual panel at the top has the application launcher over here. Okay. And then you've got your time and date in the center. 
which you you can check it and do things and slide you know through you can adjust it from months days years whatever you know just your standard thing with your date and time and then you have your uh, uh, network usage then you have your system tray over here and then this is your virtual desktops over here all the way to the right so you can cycle through you could add more whichever one it is that you want uh, if you hit the little drop down menu that's your your hidden notification tray area where you get notifications all that good stuff clipboard all that good stuff so there's that now you can pull this click that and yak wait comes down uh, yak Week is a drop down terminal uh, with transparency and he's got neopetch installed as you can see right here which is actually looking very nice the theme throughout the blur throughout it's just thing of beauty so that's a quick and easy way to drop down also right next to it is your pamac uh tool which uh, you can it'll let you know if you need or have updates that are available uh, it'll turn a different color more than likely red and you'll know that you have updates but this is actually your your GUI front end for the Pac-Man uh, package manager and uh, here you can certainly find uh, software if you should you need some also you can see what's installed should you need to and of course you can click on the updates and it'll tell you any updates that you may have so there is that. Now, if we go to the drop down menu, it's your standard one uh, for KDE, just themed, uh, which is got your power session right here as well. And then also you got your recent apps and then you got the under development. You have translation, CMake, the QT is, uh, suite of, of uh, you know, tools, development tools. Kate uh, was in there. Meld is in there. Uh, user feedback, that good stuff. Under graphics, you have Gwenview, Ocular, and then uh, in more applications, you have Color Chooser, K okay, Color Chooser. Under Internet, you've got Firefox, KDE Connect, which is an awesome tool. Uh, you also have the Avahi uh, SSH uh, server br browser and uh, uh, its other uh, the VNC server browser. Uh, under lo uh, Lost and Found, you have the HP UI scan. Uh, under Multimedia, you have the actual... Uh, Webcam utilities uh, for the that are the QT uh, V4L2s uh, for Office. You have Calendar, Localized, and Ocular. Notice the absence of an actual Office suite. I love the fact that it doesn't come with an actual Office suite installed, keeping it light, keeping it user friendly, because not everybody likes the same Office suites. And I personally think that the base applications should be used in distributions and allow the user with the tool that he's created for the post installation to be able to install your desired and your tools that you like. Uh, I, I, it's just awesome. Uh, for settings, of course, you've got the add or remove software, which we've taken a look at. It should launch PAMAC, which it does, as you can see. Um, you have the advanced network configure ah, the advanced network configuration he's got a render installed uh you got the fingerprint gui reader uh, system settings and yad settings in here uh under system you have uh, once again the add and remove software that is the one thing that is not particular to this distribution but i find it in a lot of distributions where they'll have like add or remove software and other applications that are everywhere They'll have it in multiple different locations to get to, which I don't know why that happens, but it does happen. And that is just something that is a little, you know, it's not, it, it's redundant more than anything, but it's not like, it's like multiple same alternative apps or softwares that are installed to do one SIM job. So, uh, but anyhow, there's that. Then you have, like, the see, here's the Avahi Zero Config browser. I mean, uh, Crash Process Viewer, uh, Dolphin is in here, which is a standard KDE thing. Uh, Gparted, HTOP, Console is their actual terminal of choice. Um, all the K-Suite tools that are, that are installed. You got your system monitor. Let's open that up and take a look and see what we're doing for, oh, shoot, for our actual... Process is going on. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And as you can see, we're using 1.8 gigs of RAM. Uh, we have about, it bounces anywhere between 10 and 20% of my CPU, so not bad at all. I mean, it's smooth. I like it. Um, 
Uh, System Genie, Zero Linux, hello. Yakquake. For utilities, you have Arc, the uh, archiving tool, GNOME Disks. Uh, Flat Seal, which is a, a tool that you use to, to um, uh, give permissions to your flat packs and organize them. Kate, KCalc, uh, KWrite, uh, Latte Doc, which is what's down at the bottom. PackSeek, Piper. Um, under help is help and then of course you got power session at the bottom now that once again um, you have it on the side panel here and then you have it here right here so uh, redundancy but minimal redundancy so now let's take a look at the dock down at the bottom you have your system processes right here then you have your uh, dolphin file manager right here which is a standard one that comes with uh, KDE, uh, love the icon themes. They're looking good, looking good. Uh, like I said, the theming throughout. I, I, the, the little button even turns colors to the actual KDE colors. Isn't that cool? I mean, uh, uh, Zero Linux colors. Uh, so that's, that's kind of cool. Um, so then you have Firefox, which is probably the, the 113 version. If we open it up, it's your standard Firefox. Nothing really super fantastic. Uh, yep, it's 113, so it's there. Uh, I love the theming of Firefox, how it's themed throughout. It's got the same same purple that goes with the actual uh, uh, theming. Uh, so that that's awesome. It's got meld uh, console. We'll open that up because we looked at well, yeah, quick, but this is the actual console. Once again, theming follows the suit. Everything looks good. Uh, the Neo Fetch is right here. Um, it's your standard, your standard, you know, terminal emulator. And then under system settings, that's your standard system settings, which allows you to uh, adjust anything and everything. That's the one thing about KDE is you can customize pretty much everything. And, of course, the theming's there as well, all the way through globally. Uh, Gpart it is down here. And also flat seal. And then the, the, the Zero Linux Hello. Uh, you can launch it from here as well. So that is a brief rundown on Zero Linux, the second anniversary edition, second year anniversary. So I, it's, again, everything that Team Zero Linux puts together is on par. You can guaranteed, you can be guaranteed that you are going to have continuity throughout. Well done to the Zero Linux team. Uh, this week has been awesome reviewing distributions and making these videos i really enjoyed it uh a lot of quality time has been spent into it like i said before if you want to thank them you could obviously thank them in a comment here or you can pop into the discord server and thank them there on mine or actually go to zero linux's discord server as well uh, i will put a link to the description for the forums where you can find the infos uh and the re release notes and uh, re uh on these here so stay tuned to that and once again i ask you guys to do the same thing as always you guys do what you do keep on linuxing stay blessed have a great day and i'll see you in the next video you guys have a wonderful day.